Welcome back everybody, Lone Star Patriot here. Thanks for joining me. So today I want to talk about probably one of the most overlooked items, or at least an item that's not generally high on the priority list in terms of EDC, and that is an individual first aid kit. Now, as the adage goes, if you can induce trauma, you should also be able to stop trauma. Now, there's not an expectation for you to have the same knowledge base as say a medical professional or first responder. However, it is critical that you have at least a basic understanding of how to utilize some of these supplies. At the same time, it's also much more likely that you'll be involved in a situation to where medical is needed versus say, where you haven't engaged somebody in a gunfight or a situation such as that. So what I'd like to do is at least go through my medical kit to give you some ideas in case you're wanting to start your own kit. So stay tuned. All right, so starting with the outside of this particular pouch. Now, this is a Maxpedition zip hook pocket organizer. This is the extra large size. Now, they also make a small, medium, large. So I'll explain as we open up the contents as to why I like this particular pouch or the size of this pouch the best. Now, starting with the outside, it has a nice loop filled on the front. And obviously, I indicate this by having my medical patch here to clearly identify that this is in fact a medical kit. Now, I have multiples of these as well as other pouches that are identical. So it's nice to clearly identify a medical kit versus something else. Now on the top here, it has two pouches. Again, the first set of zipper pulls here, as well as the second pouch here by these back zipper pulls. And then as you move to the top here, it does have a nice large uh, grab handle, as well as if the name indicates a zip hook for say attaching to a D-ring. And then it definitely has the Molly webbing here for Molly compatible gear. And lastly, it has two drain holes here at the bottom as well. Now, we'll take a look at the internal contents of this particular pack, but I wanna note that this is simply just one idea in terms of a pouch to carry your medical supplies in. You can certainly find less expensive options. In worst cases, you can simply put all these contents in a Ziploc bag. So the pouch itself does not need to be an expensive item. So. Again, let's open these up and take a look at the inside. Okay, so starting with this outside pouch here, one thing to note is that both pouches have a YKK zipper, which is a high quality zipper. They're self-lubricating. And as you'll note, I have this particular IFAC pretty much filled to the brim, so it's nice to have a high quality zipper to keep all my contents inside this pack. So if we open this up, this particular side, I have designated for more of a basic first aid kit. And the nice thing about this is that it opens up like a clamshell to easily see both sides of this pouch. Now, starting on this side, it has elastic webbing, again, oriented in a horizontal position, which is nice. I have, say, chapstick, a lighter, a utility knife, but I can certainly add things on this side as well. Now, moving to the other side, it has a nice D-ring. And in this case, I have a small flashlight, again, if I need to visually see what's in this pack at night. I have a pen and pencil in this utility pouch, which inside this utility pouch, I have a snap light, again, to utilize at night in case I need it, or I can locate my position with that light. Also, I have a notepad. This is a write in the rain notepad, again, for taking notes if I need to. And then lastly, I have a basic medical kit here. Now, this is in a Plymore Heavy Mill bag. However, you can certainly use Ziploc bags. I just like these Plymore bags because they are sturdy. Now, in this particular Plymore bag, I have on this side just different sizes of gauze. I do have two sets of nitro gloves, again, to keep things sterile if I need to. I have several salt packets in here, individually packaged, as well as aspirin. So if you look at this side, I have different size band-aids. I do have some matches in here as well, but pretty much a basic kit here to address some of the very minor issues that I might encounter. Okay, so taking a look at the second pouch, this is where I have my trauma kit. And as you'll notice, this actually opens up the same way as his first pouch did. So it opens up just like a clamshell. Now this webbing here is actually now in a vertical orientation versus the horizontal orientation in the first pouch. And I prefer the vertical orientation for more of my trauma kit supplies. 
So starting on this side, I do have a self-adhesive bandage wrap. I've got some stretch gauze. I have some gauze pads of different sizes. Now it does have a nice zippered admin pouch here, which I have some sanitary wipes. Moving on to this side, I have some trauma shears. I also have some iodine in terms of an antiseptic. I have a triple antibiotic ointment here. I also have, most importantly, a rat's tourniquet. And then I do have a Sharpie in terms of writing of course, notes down or utilizing this to note the time that I have applied a tourniquet. Now, it does have an open admin pocket here. And just like the other pouch, I have another snap light. And then also critical to my trauma kit, I do have an emergency six inch trauma dressing. Now, it's important to note that these do have an expiration date and I suggest keeping these vacuum sealed in the original packaging. Okay, so I wanna show you just some of the IFACs that I have assembled myself. And of course, we just talked about this Maxpedition extra large zip hook pocket organizer. Now, I obviously have two here. So I wanna set these aside and talk about another IFAC that I have assembled. Now, this is a Maxpedition as well. However, this is an EDC pocket organizer, which is obviously smaller. And so while I can't carry as much in terms of the other IFAC in that larger zip hook organizer, you can still fit a lot of quality contents in a smaller package. So to take a look at this quickly, most of the items in here are identical in terms of what I have in the other IFACs. But just to give you a look here, now I'm a big fan of these Maxpedition EDC pocket organizers. I like this size the best. Now, Similar to the zip hook pocket organizer, this does have the elastic webbing and a vertical orientation. So I have two Sharpies, some gauze pads here of different sizes. Again, another snap light. I have the same six inch dressing on this side. Now on this side of the pouch, I do have various size band-aids. I have also the rat's tourniquet as well. And then in this section, I have a similar setup to the other one in terms of basic first aid with, again, an iodine antiseptic. I have some wet wipes here. I do have some sets of natural gloves and then some various size band-aids, smaller band-aids in this case, some salt packs, some matches, as well as different doses of aspirin. So this is just one more option in terms of a smaller pouch that can carry some of the same contents as the larger IFAC. All right guys, so I wanna show you a pretty cool little trick that I actually learned and adopted. And this is actually how I keep some of the individual packaged items in my medical kit. So for example, the aspirin that I have in my medical kit, I individually packaged say three aspirin, for example, to equate for one dose and you can actually do the same thing for any item. So in the case of say camping, I have individually packaged salt, seasoning, as well as olive oil. But again, you can tailor this to your needs. So what you're gonna need for this is, I prefer to use a clear, and this is a milkshake straw. It's a large diameter straw. That way it fits items such as the aspirin easily. I have a pair of pliers as well as, of course, a pair of scissors just to cut the straw to length. And then we have a lighter. So let's get started making one of these aspirin packs. Okay, so to get started making one of these aspirin packs, again, it'll be three aspirin per dose in my case. So I have the three aspirin here. The first thing we're gonna do is just cut the straw to length. And you wanna give yourself a little bit of room so of course you can fit the contents that you're gonna install in them and enough room to clamp each edge closed. So we have the straw cut. Now we're gonna take our pliers and 
put it on one end of the straw and you want to leave about an eighth of an inch or so there of straw overhanging the pliers and that way you can burn the edge to seal it off. So you're going to use your lighter and just evenly heat that edge and once it starts to melt you can move your pliers and just clamp down on that edge and hold it there for just a few seconds and that'll seal. So it should look something like this. So now that that's done, what we want to do is install our contents. So I'll put these three aspirin in here. And then we want to do the same thing to the other side. So we'll use our pliers to clamp shut the opposite side, get it where we want it, and then take our lighter and heat that edge. Again, heat it just enough to where it starts to melt. And then we'll move our pliers and clamp that down. Again, hold it for a few seconds. And just check to be sure that it is in fact clamped. And that's all there is to it. So hopefully that gives you a good idea. And like I said, you can certainly adopt this for any item that you want to package individually. All right, guys, so just to wrap up our discussion today on the individual first aid kit. Hopefully this gives you some good ideas in terms of suggestions for what you may want to carry in your IFAC. And at the same time, maybe there's items that I prefer to carry that don't suit your needs. So definitely tailor your IFAC to you. Now, regardless of whether or not you're a shooter or carrying a gun, on a daily basis, I still think that it's important to have a tourniquet and combat gauze, or at least a gauze for packing wounds on hand in the case that you have a life-threatening scenario. Now, most of these items, in fact, all these items can be found relatively inexpensively. And on the basic medical supplies, you can find a lot of these items at say Walmart or dollar store. So the main thing is to at least get started and create and assemble your own IFAC. And I think you'll find that you'll utilize this a lot more than you thought you would. So that pretty much wraps it up for now, but thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and keep up the good fight. So to, to package any constant tent, the commonly overlooked items, <clears throat> both a trauma kit or more Savu, Savu, IKK zipper, which are a hair quat, hoya. There's not an expectation, of course, to you to have, for you to touch, where it's a cream ointment, a a tourniquet and say combat combat zoss well, at say Walmart or a dollar store.